dream too deep Like weapon inception with etymology Syntax brackets for black kids, you see the college feet No sorries, no apologies Semiotics to plot it be God shit is what gotta sleep Blind faith why I gotta see Side in the war, writing the Torah, explore, fighting the Dora, old men triton who pour in the GMOs to the poor, creating the GMOs. The more gems that I drop, they in bad shape for the show and tell. They lying out the ass about the history. White powers, light showers is a mystery. Them Akashic records is past checkers, and we ain't past checking the past. The last weapon X, MLK dreams, the kiss a ring of the popes. Lil Caesar defense, they piece of gate in the growth. 16 year old, 16 mean sexters, sexing the little boys, the Vatican secret rectors. Say don't eat the pig, yet they harvest the pigment. Deep web shopping, Bitcoin for the shipment. They IP encrypted, we'll never see them trolling. How can theft be a crime when America was stolen? Molding, they mold the mold colon, ass the mineral. The men the roll loading golden Kim trailers tell us it is no win FBI weather altering we snowed in War selling, pain from the arm swelling Say the skin be buggy, they rain and more gelling They create more felons, more jails, the more spelling And they show no remorse to the swells, the s'more swelling This what I know, to create our survival Rule number one, get rid of they bible Step two, erase they guys, no ominous, ominous raw If we learn who they are, then they dynasty gotta fall Bill Derrid full of nonsense and I was reading these books and thinking crime was great and so I told him the truth Bri you know Uh I said it ain't that great if it was any good please believe me I'd still be doing it and no I'm not right so I got on well there then I thought more about it and it played on my head you know and I'm hearing people I'm talking to mums where their kids are going to you know going away to young offenders institutes and all that and I'm sitting I started up a charity me and my mate with six quid in my garage and we turned it into a national charity and uh, it worked well. I was going into schools, colleges. Is that made prison. us? No, that that was unlock. All right. But the thing I done wrong. A lot of um, blue rinse, you know, middle class people come in, and the trustees board and all that. And they, I didn't. They wanted to write policies and all that. I actually wanted to deal with my people. Cause yeah, it's, you it's, wanted to do the. Well, the thing is, Brian, it's my kids that are dying on the streets mm-hmm. my mothers that are crying in those houses in them slums and the politicians that are still lying and that's what i said i said there my, my kids are crying the mothers are crying and politicians still lying and doing nothing about it paping it up with people who know nothing about our world i mean if you want to live know about poor people go and live in a poor area right and if you get a politician i hated the corruption right You've got politicians fiddling their expense accounts with duck ponds and all that. Yet if a mother on a council estate fiddled her benefits to get her kid a pair of shoes, she's doing three months. Mm-hmm. They, it's insane, isn't it? Right, no, it makes me angry. And mm. I tell you something, you know, I was in the House of Lords, and this, this is one thing that everyone laughs at. I'm in the House of Lords, and the Lord can't now. I was a specialist advisor now, because they see what I do on television. So your charity work's got you in a place where people are now pointing you out as a guy who can be yeah. asked about this. Yeah, and, and I'm doing conferences for the Ministry of Justice. I'm doing motivational speaking. And I'm, we're packing the house out, right? And people are going, this, this guy doesn't... So this has transformed very quickly. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I'm up there doing that. So I'll go into... I'm on, John, I'm on the House of Commons on the Fair Select Committee as an, a specialist advisor. Then I do the uh, House of Lords uh, evidence for education because I've always pushed education is liberation. I've always said that, and I want our kids educated out of slum areas and that sort of thing, right? So I'm there, and I had this law come up, and uh, I couldn't believe it what he said to me. He went, um, Bobby. I said, Yeah, what's that? He went, From where you come from. Because I'm a piece of shit. From where you come from to where you are now, this is in the House of Lords. I'm sitting there on this thing and I'm looking at him. He said, how do you feel? I said, how do I feel? And I thought, right, you bastard. I went, I feel really at home. He said, do you? I said, yeah, I've dealt with gangsters all my life. That guy's never spoke to me ever since. Yeah. Every time he sees me now, he ducks it and goes. Because you know the game, what's <laughs> really going on. Look. You know, I, I said to someone one day, they said, Joe, about gangsters. I said, look, look, there they are, all in the eyes of Parliament. I went, I've never chopped a kid's hand off to cut rubber out of trees. I've never dealt in slavery. I didn't have people working in the fields cutting sugar down for me, and if they didn't do, put the whip across their back. I said, and I didn't sell, try and sell opium to the Chinese. I went, but all them sitting in there, that's their money. I said, they're all pimps. That's all the money. I went. Let's not even get on to why they went to Iraq. Et cetera, yes, et of course. You know what I mean? Why do they have wars? Who earns money out of wars? Mm. Yeah. 
arms dealers. Mm. And instead of, instead of spending money on creation and the National Health Service and all those things of kids, right, they invested in bombs to destroy us. So what sort of psychopaths you got in there? And they call me a bad guy. I tell you what, if we go to heaven, I'm going up with a few of them, I'd look like, well, here go to me shake hands, Bobby, come in and have a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. At least. Now, if I could have built that village, right, I could have taken all these people out of jail, put them into training, training that they wanted to do, not training I was making them do, because you've got, you've got to give people choice. Mm-hmm. What's good for one ain't good for the other. And this is what they've got an habit of doing, Brian. They stick people in little boxes, and they call it key performance, uh, key performance indicators, KPIs, KPTs, key performance targets. KPIs was invented by um, nuts in the home office. Right, and I used to mm-hmm. say KP nuts. Yeah, it's nuts in the own <laughs> office, right? So what you've got to do is look at these kids and think, how can we do it? And there's no good just sitting around talking in talk shops and getting all these people who don't know what they're going through, right? They blame it on every kid now. You never heard of people with like mental health problems because they don't want to deal with it. Oh, he's hyperactive. No, he's bored the tears because the teacher don't know how to teach him. He's made the school boring. Mm-hmm. The kid, why not have him learn basic maths, basic English? If he wants to go and do bricklaying, plumbing, all that, last year, pull him out of school and put him on a course. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that that doesn't go out of, and oh. it needs to be. It needs put to be looked schools. at. Um, it's frustrating, isn't it? Bu- bureaucracy just gets in the way of. A no, I tell you what. Right, I'll tell you something, right? Say, for instance. Right? Now, this is where you're going to think I'm really insane, right? I don't think you're insane, mate. Right? Take, for instance, if crime ended tomorrow, if I found a way saying, right, no criminals tomorrow, judges are out of work, police are out of work, solicitors are out of work, barristers are out of work, probation's out of work, social workers out of work, right? Where's the jobs going to come to fill uh, them it, slots? It, it wasn't just you making a living off of crime, mate. No! <laughs> it's a, this, is what I it's said, this is what I said in the book. Right? I was in the criminal business. I wasn't a gangster. I was in the cri- I knew how it was because I watched what my brief was getting off me. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the biggest robbers I've ever met in my life and legal. <laughs> you know, I'll get you out of this, Bobby. You know, I can help you, boy. You know, you're looking at a big one here. I'm looking at him, I think, legal robbery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. a racket of, of sorts. Course. It's, in many ways, it's the same, similar as putting bricks through your windows and then saying before the first well, time. Well, the, the thing is, and the thing is, they're doing a deal with the old bill anyway, trading off. Well, basically, yeah. Yeah, they're trading uh, off. Well, you can have him if you let this one go yeah. or go easy on that and there's a few quid. They're all in the swindle. Mm-hmm. Right? So, in them days, I knew how it was working. Mm-hmm. So, why should I respect them? I've met some really good coppers and I've met some really good prison officers and I've met really good judges. But I've also met the other ones who ain't. And they're worse, they're equivalent to the to the criminal enterprise, as we want to call it, the super grass in there. Them bent coppers are worse than that yeah. because they disgrace all the other ones and they see that warrant card as a Barclay bank card that they can go around cashing in on. Mm. Right? Got no respect for them. No respect for them at all. Got respect for the normal copper on the beat. But when you get specialised squads like the robbery squad, the drug squad and all that, they're seeing all us fillers earning a lot of dough and they're thinking, I want some of that. I want a couple of hundred, well, on maybe 30, 60 grand a year. These people are earning that in a month. Mm-hmm. Ain't gonna Undermines be, the whole system. Ain't, ain't going to be too hard to corrupt them, is it? Very easy when you've got a, oh. as much money as the criminals are making. Well, yeah. So it's just sliding it's, them it's, it's, it's the same as when you're in prison. Yeah. You know, those who ain't got nothing live on the prison rations. Those who are connected and got a few quid, you're eating steak. And that is fact. Video showing one of 32 suspected gang members arrested across the metro area. Keep my head up and stay strong. A former DeKalb County police officer was also arrested in the raids today. Channel 2's Richard Elliott is live in DeKalb with how investigators say that officer bragged Richard that he was a hitman. Uh, in this indictment. This indictment doesn't just cover things in DeKalb County. FBI conducted raids in Cobb and Paulding. Also involves investigations in Valdosta in Macon and the city of Atlanta. But DeKalb's police chief told me he's disappointed. It also involves one of his now former officers. This is a photo of now former DeKalb County police officer Vancito Gums now facing charges of being part of a vast criminal conspiracy involving the notorious street gang 
the gangster disciples. Um, I was saddened and, and disappointed to find out that one of our former officers um, was one of the members that was indicted. DeKalb's police chief James Conroy talked with me and says Gums resigned last October after investigators say he lied to them about his involvement in using some illegal drugs. So as we were preparing to terminate him for that, he went ahead and resigned and, and left before the investigation was completed. Only Channel 2 was there as the FBI raided a Marietta apartment complex as they picked up 30 of 32 alleged gang members. The U.S. Attorney's Office says the gangster disciples used charitable organizations as fronts for their illegal activity. The U.S. Attorney's Office says the gangster disciples used charitable organizations as fronts for their illegal activity. And according to the indictment, Vancito Gums bragged that he was a hitman for the organization. I had a meeting here, and I'm like, hold on. So how did the black gangster disciples get, get to rent the building for the night? Like, who rents a, a building to different gangs? You gotta remember, David was his name hold weight. You know what I'm saying? He was the king of all kings. You understand? Larry Hoover, the chairman of the board. Yeah, I'm familiar. I know you're familiar with the power Larry Hoover holds to today. So it, it just always got me like, what happened? So I ended up asking him, was King David and Larry Hoover Masons at that age? And he gave me a smirk. He gave me the craziest look. He like a giggle. You know what I'm saying? And he never answered. That was the end of the conversation. That's all he told me. You know what I'm saying? He told me stories, how they fought, how they used to rumble, they didn't use guns. If you did have a gun, they didn't have to use it. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of shit that niggas know. You know what I'm saying? We know what happened back then. But I just could not understand what was going on. And then I look at a lot of the symbols with the gang, far as disciples and the people. And a lot of them comes from the Mason doctrine. And um, it, it really gets me <laughs> some of the laws is in the Mason's rule book. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, it's good enough to say that BGD was started by Freemasons. I want to say to the brothers behind me and to the brothers out there in the YouTube world, you know what I'm saying, from Freedom Lodge number one, Grandmaster Otten Ray, you know, we pay homage to all the Grandmasters of four letter and three letter, and we stand in solidarity by saying that Rick Ross, William Wallace, is not in the order of Masonry nor is he recorded to be a brother in any Masonic Lodge, four-letter or three-letter Wallace. So we understand some brothers from the Gangster Disciples got a problem with the fake Ross being an Illuminati or Masonry. Let's just get the understanding. If he's not even a Mason, he can't be in the Illuminati. So before any of us can say anything about Illuminati or Masonry, you have to know about that. But if he's not a Mason, he can't be in the Illuminati. The same way, if you're not a, a, a skull, if you are skull and bones, you got to go through masonry. So we just like to say in solidarity to the gangster disciples that no, Rick Ross is not a mason. So we just want to say that to y'all. I'm Abdulaziz, a grandmaster of the Grand Lodge of Luxor here in Los Angeles, California, and uh, with Freedom Lodge Number One. Uh, we want to say that we don't want to have any kind of conflict with the gangster disciples because of Rick Ross' uh, claim to be an Illuminati. We don't know him to be a, a Mason that has come through any blue lodge, and we don't know him to be a Mason uh, that would be an Illuminati.